Today on The Missing Series, we are discussing the disappearance of Margaret Ellen Fox. She's been missing for nearly five decades. The 14-year-old girl disappeared under mysterious circumstances in Burlington, New Jersey in 1974. Margaret Ellen Fox was born February 4, 1960. Just before Margaret's disappearance, she had graduated from St. Paul's Grammar School. According to reports, Margaret loved riding horses and was taking piano lessons. Margaret disappeared on June 24, 1974, after making plans to meet with a man calling himself John Marshall in reference to a babysitting job. On that day, Margaret's younger sister or brother accompanied her to the bus stop and watched her get on a bus. That bus was headed toward Mount Holly, New Jersey, where Margaret was going to interview for the job with John Marshall. Margaret had placed an advertisement to get a job as a babysitter. She was contacted by the man calling himself John Marshall on June 19, 1974. At the time, John Marshall postponed meeting Margaret several times even though he said he needed a babysitter that weekend. After several postponements, John Marshall said he would meet Margaret in Mount Holly and would be in a red Volkswagen. That's when Margaret took the trip to Mount Holly. He also gave her a phone number to call that police would later trace to a local grocery store in the area. Witnesses reported seeing Margaret near Mill and High Streets in Mount Holly after she got off the bus when she arrived in the town. Margaret had been told by John Marshall that that's where he would meet her. However, that was the last time Margaret was seen, and since then, she's never been heard from again. Margaret was last seen wearing a light blue, long sleeve floral pattern blouse with a squared top and a flared waist. She was also wearing a black and white or blue and white checkered waist length jacket, along with maroon flared pants with a yellow patch on the knee. The shoes she was wearing were brown sandals with a heel strap. Around her neck, she wore a gold necklace with flowers and a blue stone. And on her wrist, she wore a gold charm bracelet with a round blue stone in it. Margaret was also carrying a brown bag and eyeglasses case with the huckleberry design around it. After Margaret's disappearance, police started recording phone calls made to Margaret's home. One of the calls the family received was from a man who demanded $10,000 for Margaret. The man said $10,000 might be a lot of bread, but your daughter's life is the buttered topping. Police have never been able to identify that man. The FBI released an audio recording of that phone call. Here it is. $10,000 might be a lot of bread, but your daughter's life is the buttered topping. Who is it? $10,000 might be a lot of bread, but your daughter's life is the buttered topping. Who is it? $10,000 might be a lot of bread, but your daughter's life is the buttered topping. Who is it? Police have also never been able to identify who John Marshall is. In 2016, an age progress photo of Margaret was released, aging her to approximately 56 years old. At the time of her disappearance, Margaret stood 5'2 to 5'3 tall and weighed 105 pounds. She had brown hair and blue eyes and freckles. At the time of her disappearance, her two front teeth were missing. She was also wearing glasses. On June 24th of this year, the 45th anniversary of Margaret's disappearance, the FBI announced a $24,000 reward for information that leads to the arrest and conviction of the person responsible for Margaret's disappearance. The assistant special agent in charge of Margaret's case, Joseph Denham, says of Margaret's case, quote, the community we serve has our solemn promise that we will pursue all viable options in the interest of delivering justice. We realize in missing persons cases, especially those involving children, there is a loved one or a family at the other end enduring heartache every day because there is no conclusion. We hope this renewed effort will produce results that might give Margaret Fox's family some sense of closure, end quote. Sadly, Margaret's parents passed away without ever knowing what became of their daughter. Margaret's siblings are still alive, and they do still live in the Burlington area. Hopefully, Margaret's case will be solved so that at least they can have some sense of closure and resolution and know what eventually became of their sister. Anyone with information on Margaret's case is asked to call the FBI, Newark Field Office, or the Burlington Police Department.